sure that you're on mute while uh, we're going through the presentation portion. Of course, we'll have a chance to connect with each other during the networking session at the end. Uh, and if you can, please turn on your camera so we can see you. And also please post your questions uh, in the chat box and also introduce yourself, uh, your organization and what brought you here today. And now to formally welcome you to our event, I'd like to introduce our CEO, Steve Grossman. Well, I'll try not to make it quite so formal, Anna Marie, but thank you so much for your leadership and to the entire Intercity Capital Connections team. We've just added four new colleagues because we've got 21 different geographies all over the country for the ICCC program this year. And special expression of appreciation to my colleague, Anne Buriano, Senior Program Coordinator for her leadership in Hawaii over the past three years. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Welcome to our kickoff event for the 2021 cohort. As many of you know, during the last two years, we've trained 150 small business owners in Hawaii, 95 in 2020 alone. And because we ran the program virtually for the first time in 2020, we were proud to welcome businesses last year from Oahu, from Maui, the Big Island, Kauai, and Molokai, and we hope to have equally strong geographical representation, if not broader representation, once again this year when we come together on August 17th and 19th for our opening seminars. None of this would have been possible without the leadership and unwavering support of Kaiser Permanente, whose team I'll acknowledge shortly. Since 2016, Kaiser Permanente has sponsored 24 different cohorts, training 1,786 small businesses. Over 2,000 jobs have been created as a result of the alumni of this program, creating jobs and growing more rapidly. Alumni have raised almost $90 million of capital in the 12 markets throughout the country that Kaiser Permanente sponsors, all the way from Baltimore, Washington, DC, Atlanta, all the way to Hawaii. That is known as impact. I also want you to know how pleased we are that more than 20% of last year's cohort was made up of native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander small business owners. We hope to equal or exceed that record in 2021. I also want to express our appreciation to the Amerisource Bergen Foundation, to Visient, to Cardinal Health, to Blackstone Consulting, and EY for their support of the Kaiser Permanente sponsored cohorts. And thanks as well on the next slide to our national partners who helped make possible the 21 cohorts we'll run throughout the country this year. And you'll see the partners, Bank of America, FedEx, Regions Bank, our Terrace Impact Investors, Boston Consulting Group, Edward Jones, the National Business League, and Rose International. But beyond those national partners, we can't say enough about our wonderful and growing network of partners who have provided us locally with a wealth of nominations, coaching, and guidance that have been the key ingredients in our success together. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see the broad range of partners from all over the islands who have been so extraordinary and so creative and imaginative in terms of their nominations, their coaching and their guidance. Nothing is more important than building trust. And these valuable local relationships make all the difference. I've got a lot of people to thank, so I better start doing it right now. I mentioned Kaiser Permanente. I wanna express our appreciation to Chris House, Vice President of Marketing, Sales and Business Development. I'll introduce her a little bit more detail in a few minutes. She'll be speaking in just a couple of minutes. As I said, this is the third cohort in Hawaii that Kaiser Permanente has sponsored. And I also want to express our appreciation to Kaiser Permanente's lead for the Hawaii cohort, Dave Tomilowitz, Senior Director of Marketing and Advertising, along with his colleagues, Nina Miata and Karen Fox Alcomindras, who are working alongside David to support this cohort. Other partners who have been here, many of them since day one, Glenn Wakai, Senator from the Hawaii's 15th district. Glenn, you were there from our very first visit at the Y three years ago. 
You've been such an extraordinary supporter of ICIC. You've attended the community meetings. You've been our partner speaker, and we're grateful for your leadership. To Melly James, co-founder of Mana Up, and Melly, please express our appreciation to your colleague, Brittany Hyde, for her leadership. You've been one of our top nominators. You've nominated over 50 businesses since 2019, 25 of which are now alumni of the program. You've been a speaker at our events and you participated in our Made in Business panel of 2020 National Conference. So you are a triple threat in every way, shape or form. We're looking forward to your remarks. To our colleagues at the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, Dennis Wong, whom you'll hear from in just a few moments, senior business advisor, participated on the resource panel last year, and also to Marty Kennedy, Dennis Boyd, Joe Burns, and Robbie Melton for their leadership. They nominated 15 businesses last year, nine of which are now alumni of the program. To the Maui Economic Development Board, Leslie, it's wonderful to see you again. Leslie Wilkins, president and CEO of the board, one of our top nominating partners. They nominated 24 businesses last year, 22 of which are now alumni of the program. And we'll be hearing from Leslie shortly, and we express our appreciation as well to your colleague, Annette Lynch. To Andrea Christina Camo, the Vice Consul and Economic Officer for the Philippine Consulate General in Honolulu. Thank you so much for your nominations, many of which are now alumni of the program. To the Hawaii Alliance of Nonprofit Organizations, or HANO, Lisa Marayama, and if I'm mispronouncing somebody's name, please accept my apology. President and CEO who nominated companies in 2019, our first year, and also to Gwen Navarrete, Clapperich Training Coordinator. And just a couple more expressions of appreciation. Uh, Haino nominated 13 businesses, 12 of which are now alumni. And Gwen nominated four additional businesses through her own company. And she is a graduate of the 2020 Hawaii cohort. And finally, welcome to Crystal Marcellus, Marketing Director of Work Arts LLC. She was a participant in both 2019 and 2020 the alumni are the real heroes of this program. Think about what it meant to 150 small business owners to go through a pandemic such as we haven't seen for 100 years, where the islands in so many ways shut down entirely, to have 95 companies last year, 150 in all, struggling mightily, learning, growing, flourishing, overcoming obstacles and roadblocks and barriers that you never could have imagined. The alumni are our real heroes, <clears throat> and we're so thrilled to have a number of them with us today. <clears throat> and with that, I mentioned Chris House, and I'm now gonna introduce Chris, who will deliver some remarks on behalf of Kaiser Permanente. Chris has extensive healthcare experience. She came to Kaiser, as I always note, from Magellan Health Services in Avon, Connecticut. It's a long way from Avon to Hawaii, but as Chris said earlier, you couldn't pry me away from Hawaii if you tried. Chris's leadership has been recognized many times over the years, and I'll just cite that in 2019, Chris was named to Hawaii Business Magazine's 20 for the next 20 Hawaii's people to watch, recognized as one of the 20 people who will have a major impact on Hawaii over the next two decades. But Chris, in addition to her professional work, has time to volunteer and to play a leadership role in the community, serving on boards such as executive board member for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Hawaii, executive board member for the Hawaii Food Bank, and a fun fact, executive board member of the Hawaii Horse Show Association. Please welcome from Kaiser Permanente, Chris House. Chris, take it away. Thanks so much, Steve. Um, aloha and welcome everyone. Um, as Steve said, uh, I'm Chris House. I'm the Vice President of Marketing, Sales and Business Development from Kaiser Permanente uh, in Hawaii. And uh, I am so excited to speak with all of you today and welcoming you to the ICCC nominator event. Uh, Kaiser Permanente has been in Hawaii for over 60 years and it's the second largest health plan in the state. Uh, we have over 257,000 members. Uh, we are served by 600 physicians uh, throughout the islands. And uh, as all of you know, and I know, uh, Hawaii can be a very challenging environment for business owners. Uh, the impact of COVID-19 over the past 14 months has not only affected our physical and mental health, um, but it's placed unprecedented economic hardship 
on the business sectors in our state. Businesses has, have suffered from a lack of resources, access to capital, coaching, uh, and the capacity to build timely business recovery strategies. Um, over the past 14 months, we have responded by offering several resources uh, to the business community. We've conducted uh, 17 Science of Coronavirus COVID-19 update webinars. We have sponsored a series of Getting Back to Business webinars with the Hawaii Chamber of Commerce and the Kapolei Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and developed and continue to update playbooks on planning for the next normal at work, planning for the next normal at school, uh, which are all accessible to the public. As well, we've been out in the community and we've helped those that have truly uh, needed. Uh, we, we have organized monthly food distribution events that served unemployed and furloughed union members uh, since last summer and to date, we have distributed over 400,000 pounds of food. We fed over 10,000 families, over 21 events. Uh, and as of this week, our hospital and medical offices have administered over 111,000 vaccines. Uh, we opened our mass vaccination clinic in March at the Kapolei Consolidated Theater. Um, and we're also administering vaccinations at our Kaiser Permanente Moana Lua uh, and neighborhood clinics um, and community outreach events as well that have been conducted throughout the state. Um, we're so proud uh, to serve Hawaii uh, and that's why we are so proud to serve and support this work in the ICCC program. It improves the economic health of underserved business owners, their employees, and it helps the entire community thrive. Uh, as Steve noted, uh, this is Kaiser Permanente Hawaii's third year as a partner with the ICCC. We've had over 150 ICCC alumni in our area, small businesses who have participated in this tuition-free program have averaged a 19% growth in revenue and raised nearly 3.6 million in capital in just two years since we launched this in the islands. Success of our small business leaders is critical to the success of Hawaii's economic recovery and well being. I encourage you to nominate a business leader for the 2021 program, which can help provide support, relevant education, and much needed resources to our minority owned small business owners in Hawaii. So, on behalf of all of Hawaii, thank you for attending today's kickoff event and I will turn it back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. And thank you, Steve, for your remarks. Uh, I also just want to acknowledge again, our wonderful team in Hawaii, uh, led by David, Karen, Nina, and Anne-Marie. Uh, before we started the event, we were talking about some of the vaccine distribution efforts. And we really appreciate that we have the opportunity to work with on, an organization that sees the holistic, that has a holistic view of uh, of health and wellness, that there is a spectrum that includes economic health as well as the actual physical and um, uh, and mental health that uh, we, I think, have all seen as well in, uh, during the pandemic. Um, I'm going to put in a, the chat box an event that we're doing just as a plug around vaccination adoption for small businesses because we have so many small business champions here. Um, so this is an event that we're doing on um, the 11th. Um, around that. So now I'm going to talk about the uh, program, the ICCC program. Many of you in the room are already familiar with it, so I'm very excited to uh, talk about some of the changes that we're making, uh, especially this year related to the recovery and reopening um, uh, of small businesses. Uh, so Inner City Capital Connections is what we have dubbed as a 40-hour MBA for busy entrepreneur executives. We know that businesses that grow sustainably are a source of lasting strength in their communities. And we're proud to say that IEEE participants develop and practice the skills to improve their operations, but also look at strategically how they can grow so that they can create more jobs, raise capital, and continue to grow. 
Uh, IEEC is a, is a tuition-free executive leadership program, uh, and it is designed to help business owners build capacity for sustainable growth and resiliency, as well as survive the economic impact of the pandemic. And some of the benefits of the program are um, uh, top-notch education. We bring in a, a number of professors who not only um, specialize in the subject areas that they teach, but also have a connection to the community as well as entrepreneurship uh, experience. Um, another benefit is the networking. While we are looking at um, in, in this cohort, businesses that are in Hawaii, uh, the participants that we have been able to work with in the, in the last couple of years have uh, talked highly about the benefit of networking with businesses on the mainland and in other regions. And this is a real um, opportunity for, for our business owners to exchange ideas and, um, uh, and create new opportunities together as well. Uh, other benefits are access to different resources as well as coaching. So in terms of what the program looks like, it has four key components. Uh, I mentioned the education and this is comprised of four uh, subjects and these are covered in our opening uh, live seminar, which are two half days taking place this year. And these four subjects are marketing, finance, leadership and strategy. Uh, these subjects are focused again on growth and in the last year we've also focused on um, short term or immediate tactical um, uh, strategies to implement to um, uh, to counter the, the impact of the pandemic. Um, and then the next component is the digital education. So in the past, we have had a number of topic specific webinars and workshops. This year, I am so excited to share that we also have a full suite of digital, digital learning modules that complement the live education. So those four subjects that I mentioned will also be available in a digital format and includes um, a number of deliverables that our business owners can, um, can put together as part of their, their growth plan. They can also take these deliverables as an example, um, a, um, a, a capital worksheet that they can take to their coach and have a meaningful discussion about what they would like to do next in order to grow the business. Uh, and I mentioned coaching. So the third component, which we believe is such a critical part of uh, ensuring that business owners have that, um, have that support and accountability, is that one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, that one-on-one -on -one coaching is, uh, is tracked in two, um, uh, two areas. The first is general, uh, and that could be topics related to strategy, marketing, all these, um, these, these broader subjects. And then we also have a track specifically for capital. For both coaching tracks, we partner with a number of organizations, some that are local, others that are national. And uh, what, what we uh, really appreciate about th that partnership or those different partnerships is the ability to, um, for businesses to uh, continue that relationship with these coaches it, and, and ensure that they have support not only during the program, but beyond. Uh, we also partner with a number of capital providers who can provide business owners with direct feedback on uh, their, their capital plan or what they need to, uh, to take the next step in, and access the funds that, um, that are needed for their business. And then the last piece of uh, the program is our national conference. Uh, and I am glad to, to share that last year during our national conference, we had a number of Hawaii-based businesses participate. We also have what we call our uh, gentler, kinder shark tank. And the winner of that was a Hawaii-based business called Shaka Tea. And if you don't already know them, uh, make sure to look them up after uh, this event. Now, uh, again, we are um, offering this, this program with the flexibility of uh, the online format. So we are going to be offering this via Zoom, um, which means that uh, in the past, we 
when we were in person, we were in Honolulu, which presented some barriers as far as, um, as travel requirements. Uh, so this year, once again, we'll be available to offer the program uh, through all of the islands. So we really encourage you to nominate and, and select those businesses from across the region. Uh, in terms of the um, requirements, uh, businesses that go through the program are typically past the startup phase. They are usually in, in business for at least two years. Uh, and while we don't accept uh, startup companies, we do make sure that they are connected with the right resources. Once again, some, some of which are um, directly in the community. Uh, we also look at businesses that are um, independent, they're for-profit or non-profit, uh, but they are able to uh, make decisions for, for their business. Um, and then finally, we do look at uh, different clusters. Uh, we just uh, recently completed a healthcare cluster and we're looking at healthcare, construction, food service, and, and um, other key industries that contribute to um, that local economy. Uh, and now to uh, give you an insight of what the program looks like from the alumna's perspective, I'd like to introduce our, uh, our next guest, uh, Crystal with Crystal Marcellus, who is the marketing director at Work Arts. Uh, Crystal's um, uh, been uh, handling the brand development of the organization and also uh, implementing a lot of the innovative marketing strategies there. So we're excited to have her here today to share about her experience with ICCC as well as her experience as a, uh, a business leader there in Hawaii. So Crystal, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Henry, and thanks everybody for being here today. And I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience with ICCC. Um, I am the marketing director for Work Arts. We're an architectural millwork company, which is a fancy way to say that we make furniture for commercial and residential projects throughout the state. Um, so we're, we're recently, since 2019, based on the Big Island, but formerly we're in Honolulu. So we're statewide on our projects and pre-pandemic, we're traveling throughout the state to work. Um, another company you might know us from is our side project, Bamboo Bikes Hawaii, and we were teaching workshops on how to build um, bam bamboo bikes out of locally sourced materials. So uh, my partner, Barrett Work, participated in the 2019 ICCC and went through the capital program, um, more on that side, and then I focused on marketing and strategy in 2020. Um, the timing of the program was just absolutely on point, um, coming out of that washing machine of emotions and supply chain just disruption and all this craziness. It was really a grounding point that helped me move forward with my business and um, have people like Susan Perkins and Dobbins from Harvard really be like, you're on the right track, you know, just getting that pat on the back that is like, oh, these ideas that in a small company, you're only bouncing off of a few people um, and hearing it from trained professionals and really experienced educators was just a breath of fresh air in a time of such uncertainty. So uh, I found a lot of value in that. Um, and so, and then the one-on-one -on -one mentoring has been really transformative for, um, for this year. I, I went through a few different mentors actually, so that's another great thing. You can find exactly who's a good fit for you. And if you put a little bit of work into it, you're gonna be able to match up with somebody that's fantastic um, like I did. Uh, my mentor Gary and I were, were meeting weekly uh, and he's been just helping me look long-term. A lot of times when you're in a small business with just a few people, as many of you, I'm sure no, um, you're just dealing with the day-to-day -day operations of the business and not working on that five, 10 year view. And Gary has really just helped me to keep the eye on that long-term and not let the day-to-day -day things come up, uh, <laughs> make you forget about your bigger goals because that's really what's gonna make us drive forward and um, be successful. So. Um, yeah, and then the last thing that I really loved was networking because we moved recently um, to a new island. It was great to connect with some of the other Big Island uh, 
companies. I'm not sure if that was on purpose or by accident, but we were able to link up with some other Big Islanders and made great connections that we're still in touch with. So if anybody has any questions for me in the future about my experience, feel free to get in touch. But yeah, thank you so much to ICCC and the whole team has been really helpful. And I feel like so many familiar faces are here now. I'm looking forward to future events with you all. Thank you. Crystal, thank you so much. And it's great to hear that, um, that you're able to make connections even as you move to a different island. I always think about the national connections that we're able to facilitate. And that's um, definitely something that I had not considered. So um, thank you so much for those, uh, those remarks. And uh, we're so glad to have you in the program and to continue to, to, um, to really see how your business grows over the next five to 10 years. Um, so now I'd like to introduce our, uh, my colleague and our lead coordinator for, um, for Hawaii, Amber Riano, who has been leading this cohort for the last um, two years, as some of you may have heard. Um, we've had a number of, of great trips to Hawaii and um, she's been such an instrumental part of uh, ensuring that we are bringing a lot of uh, the representation and the diversity into our um, stakeholders and to the, the people that we engage. So Amber, thank you for your work and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Anna Marie. Uh, and thank you, Crystal, for sharing your experience in the program. We're proud to have you as an ICCC Hawaii alumna. Um, for the newer folks in the room, as Anna Marie mentioned, my name is Amber Briano, and I'm a senior program coordinator with the Inner City Capital Connections Program. And now I'm excited to introduce our key partners who will provide partner remarks. You'll hear from Jel Melly James um, from Mana Up, Dennis Wong from the Hawaii SBDC, and Leslie Wilkins from the Maui Economic Development Board and their experience as partners. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Melly for her partner remarks. Aloha everyone, I'm Melly James, co-founder of Mana Up. Uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, we're so excited to have been a a, a partner for, with ICCC uh, since the get-go and with, of course, Kaiser Permanente. I can't say how important it is and so exciting to have additional outside resources to layer into the great resources that we have here in Hawaii. Um, I think, you know, with Mana Up, we are an economic development initiative. We work with local product entrepreneurs um, to help them scale the global market. So um, we've had 51 companies come through our program. We're announcing our next 12, so we'll be at 63. So we definitely work with a lot of small business here um, and I and, and really kind of know a lot of you know the mentorship the resources access to capital and and really got a first fr front row seat um, with the ICCC program um, to just see how effective it was as, as we're so in it in the minutia here ourselves and um, we had 17 companies go through the program uh, we nominated quite a few and, and 17 participated which was a huge and um, really looking at as we saw with the pandemic um, how there are so many gaps, um, not only with mentorship and resources and areas that we should be looking at from a revenue standpoint, how do we broaden um, our network so that we can be stronger and fortify for if and when something like this happens again. I know for many of our companies, they heavily switched to e-commerce and online and really leaned on that broadened network um, that they were able to establish through the ICCC program. So, you know, I know Noho Home uh, was one of them. Many of you may know Jaylene, um, incredible. And she, you know, she really shared a lot around, and this is something Crystal mentioned earlier, really leaning into the mentors. I mean, you get out what you put in. Um, and so being connected, asking questions, you know, if it's not a, a perfect fit, or maybe you're looking for, for more, um, you communicate. And so it's not just a one and done. And that's what, something I really appreciate about the program here. It's, it's very curated um, and it continues to adjust um, and, and lean into the, the newer needs that the companies need. So um, I, I would highly recommend. So Jaylene was actually nominated through the program um, for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Business Investment Program, um, which she's participating in, or she's been participating in, um, as well as her mentor, was super relevant and invaluable at um, and had incredible experience at Louis Vuitton and Bloomingdale's, which was perfect for her as she's growing her business in the home uh, home goods area um, here in Hawaii. Uh, we had other companies like Melly Wraps based in Kauai, and she's out in the middle of nowhere in, in Kilauea. 
And so I think just to drive that point home even more, we're so lucky that we have a Kaiser Permanente here, that we have the ICCC program here um, to really help companies and bring in additional resources. I mean, we only, we have what we have here and how do we layer on um, th this amazingness um, and, and really think about how we, how we look at scaling Hawaii and scaling to national. And these are the kinds of programs that really help to complement that. So um, I hope that was helpful. I, I'm be around for questions, um, but again, we've had great experience. 17 companies have gone through. So we've heard firsthand from our entrepreneurs as to the benefits of the program. So thank you. Thank you, Melly. And I will pass it off to Leslie Wilkins. Well, aloha and good morning. Thank you for inviting us to help kick off what will be year three of our partnership. We're absolutely delighted. In fact, we think our introduction was a fortuitous event for Maui County businesses and Hawaii businesses. Um, thank you to Kaiser for extending an invitation with what I think was in the spring of 2019 uh, for me to come to Oahu at the YWCA at their beautiful Fuller Hall to be introduced to this new program they were sponsoring in Hawaii. And that's where we met Steve and his amazing team. I immediately went back to my MEDB colleagues excitedly explaining how aligned our programs were, our business development, our economic development and coaching programs were. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we joined forces in providing resources to our businesses. So after many uh, successful startup weekends that MEDB has put on for years, coaching really large uh, DOD contractor businesses on how to do business in Hawaii and all our work to target innovation sector businesses um, to help um, do exactly that. Um, we had been working on a unique group, those that had been in business for a few years that had established revenue, had established employees and they were poised to scale. And wow, wasn't that exactly what ICCC was doing. So our first cohort, we nominated six businesses that were in that sweet spot, if you will, and poised to scale, and their national resources were instrumental. Then of course, pandemic hit for our year two of the partnership. Uh, we were again aligned uh, to help our businesses survive. And this past year's cohort, we nominated intergenerational businesses that really truly make up the fabric of our business community in Maui County. And we were thrilled to have 24 accepted. And as Steve mentioned early, um, 22 of them are now alumni of the program and are really grateful for the resources and tools and networks they were exposed to. Our partnership has connected our businesses to ICCC's extensive resources, training webinars, their national archive of mentors, and individual one-on-one -on -one coaches. And it has been just an amazing juxtaposition for us, similar to what Melly said, to have our small businesses not only have our local resources and local access to capital and mentors, but then to also have a national archival database. It really truly is a joining forces effort. And as Hawaii moves forward to rebuild and rebalance our economy in this coming critical year, we have every confidence that ICCC will be an important partner and resource in that rebuilding process. And of course, we want to say a heartfelt mahalo to Kaiser Permanente for not only leading in healthcare, but leading in community development. Thank you for making this introduction to ICCC to our community. Thank you, Leslie. Great. And um, we have Dennis Wong as our next partner speaker. Dennis, if you're in the room, do you mind identifying yourself? Okay. All right. Unfortunately, Dennis was unable to join us. So um, we will go ahead and move forward with the rest of the event. Wonderful. So 
The reason why we have gathered you all here today is to um, make a nominator ask and, and see how you can get involved with um, the ICCC program. So first off, thank you, Melly and Leslie, for sharing your experiences as an ICCC partner. We always look forward to working with you and can't wait to continue and expand upon our work this year. Um, so as many of you know, one of the main ways you can get involved with the ICCC program is by becoming a nominating partner. And um, as a nominator, you would identify and nominate businesses in your network to participate in the program. So we all know that you engage with business owners differently. And so there are many ways in which you can nominate businesses for ICCC. So a few of the ways we have highlighted that you can nominate is one by submitting a list of business owners with their contact information to us and letting them know that they've been nominated just um, as a warmer lead. And then the second way in which you can do so is hosting an information session. We found these to be pretty effective and even um, during you know, board meetings and different things like that um, and inviting your network to learn, um, to attend, to learn more about the program seems to be pretty effective um, in getting the word out. And then finally, um, sharing program information via an email newsletter or through social media seems to also be effective. And we also have a social media kit. So we have um, those blurbs ready to go and we'll send it in our nominator packet tomorrow. Um, so nominating is a great way to provide additional resources to your small business network, um, showcase your organization, as well as gain exposure to our events. In addition, we can also nominate our alum for your programs and share initiatives with our network as well. So for the alums that are in the room, uh, we encourage you to nominate your fellow business owners in your network who you feel can take advantage of ICCC's resources. May you go to the next slide, please. Uh, it's the previous slide. So um, another opportunity to stay engaged with the ICCC program is to become a collaborator. As a collaborator with ICCC, we would work together to provide timely and relevant resources for our communities um, by utilizing our network of subject matter experts. So examples of how we've worked with collaborators in the past include presenting webinars, volunteering as a capital and or general business coach, uh, as well as co-hosting um, panel discussions on relevant business topics. So similar to nominating, becoming a nominator is a great way to gain exposure and build connections with other resource providers in Hawaii area, as well as across the country. For our alum in the room, you can get involved as a collaborator by hosting networking sessions and engaging with fellow alumni on relevant topics. Next slide, please. So here we provide more detail into the nomination process from how to identify businesses um, to how you can submit your nominations. You'll get all of these slides tomorrow along with our nominator process packet. So you'll, you don't necessarily need to write all this down. Um, next slide, please. So this here is the nomination and application timeline for the Hawaii program. So as you can see, our nomination deadline is July 2nd. So we certainly encourage you to begin identifying businesses now and nominating them within the next month so that we can reach out to them in a timely manner. Next slide, please. So this is, um, as you saw in the previous slide, the Hawaii opening seminar will take place on Tuesday, August 17th and Thursday, August 19th. We encourage you to save the date and attend for a portion of either day. This is a great chance for you to see the program in action as well as check in on your nominees. Next slide, please. So next steps um, for today's kickoff is to nominate businesses for the program and follow up about becoming a nominator. Next slide, please. Um, this, oh, one more slide. So this is a way you can connect with us. You can email Steve Grossman, Anna Marie Cruz, or myself. Um, we'll have our emails there. And the number on the bottom is my direct phone, phone line. Great. And now we will go ahead and open up to the audience um, for any questions about the program or nomination process. Uh, one thing that I did not clarify earlier is um, revenue requirements. We usually talk about the required revenues for our um, for our applicants, and in non-COVID times, this was a minimum of five hundred thousand annual revenues. Uh, we did relax that, and um, last year we actually removed it completely and just 
looked at survival of our uh, businesses as long as they were past the startup phase. This year, we are looking at, um, I'd say, a soft um, threshold, minimum threshold of 100,000. Um, but again, we're also looking at looking at it at a case by case basis and just really looking at fit to make sure that the business owner uh, would be interested in, in the program and can benefit from it. Um, and likewise, if there's a better resource for them at that stage of their business that we're, we're able to make that connection if this is not the right fit for them. Uh, so I wanted to make sure to address that. Okay, well, if we don't have any other questions, we're really thrilled to use this uh, time that we have um, remaining to ensure that we're facilitating these connections. We rarely get a chance to bring everybody in, in one place like this. Um, I wanna thank you all again for, for being here um, before we, we go into the networking session. Um, I also wanna thank uh, Leslie, Melly again for those remarks. Um, I think what you had said about the um, really the, the way that we can enhance the, the existing programs across the board, that's really the goal here. As, you know, we want to collaborate with as many um, uh, advocates of small businesses in the community because we don't think that there's just one resource for, for small businesses, right? We wanna make sure that we're enhancing that ecosystem and we really thank you for, um, for being part of that and for, for really being um, uh, committed partners um, in this work. Uh, we've also had a chance to um, participate in some of your programming. So we really appreciate that as well. And Crystal, I, I wanna thank you again for those remarks. We're so glad that you're able to uh, leverage the, the network that you've found, the, the coaching, which is so essential. Uh, and again, we're, we're really happy to have you be part of the alumni network and, and also be a role model for so many businesses in the community. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Amber again for the next piece, which is our uh, community gathering. Thank you, Anna Marie. So yes, uh, to echo Anna Marie, thank you once again for attending today. Um, the remainder of the kickoff will be dedicated to a networking session so you can connect with others in the room. In the breakout room, we encourage you to introduce yourself and organization, share any updates or initiatives that you're currently working on, um, and identify opportunities to stay connected. We'll do about one to two rounds of breakouts so you can meet as many people in the room today. And we'll also send out a list of attendees so you can stay connected. Happy networking.